The country's oldest Jewish university recently appealed to the Supreme Court to protect its First Amendment rights. The issue arose when a group of students at the New York City Yeshiva University attempted to launch an LGBTQ club known as the Pride Alliance Club on campus. But the school refused to recognize the club, stating that it was inconsistent with the university's Torah-based values. A trial court ruled the New York City law required Yeshiva to recognize the club, spurring the university's appeal to the Supreme Court. Joining me now to discuss it all is Will Hahn, Senior Counsel at the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty, which is representing the university in this case. Will, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you so much. It's good to be with you. Now, tell us, if you would, a bit more about this case and how this conflict came to be. Sure. This is a case about who decides who can direct the religious mission at the nation's oldest and most renowned Jewish university, Yeshiva University, a school that literally means a school for the study of Talmud, or secular courts second-guessing religious decisions. This case came about because some a small group of individuals thought that a judicial thumb should be put on the scale and that the civil government should be allowed to come in and tell yeshiva how to properly interpret the Torah and apply it on campus to its internal campus environment. And that when, and the First Amendment is very clear and the Supreme Court has been repeatedly clear that that violates a healthy understanding of the separation of church and state that is at the core of the First Amendment's religion clauses. And that does seem so intuitive that uh, and fundamental to the idea of the, of, of the First Amendment is that states, the state cannot tell a religious institution uh, how to observe and practice its religion. But obviously, this trial court saw this differently. What was the court's reasoning for saying that the school must, by the law, uh, recognize this Pride Alliance Club? The trial court said that yeshiva isn't religious enough, that despite its name, despite its over 130 year history of training the next generation of modern Orthodox Jews, that because it offered too many secular degrees alongside its world renowned Torah values based education and religious immersion, it simply could be treated like any other public accommodation and be forced to have a group that its senior rabbinical leadership determined putting its seal of approval on that would violate their Torah values. And the plaintiffs who have sued Yeshiva, they know this. They've said publicly that this is about forcing a cultural change at Yeshiva because they don't agree with how Yeshiva interprets and applies the Torah. Who's right about that? Who's wrong about that? Whether everyone's somewhere in between? The bottom line is it's simply not for a civil secular court to say. That's why we have the First Amendment. And that's why this case has gone up immediately to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, would this court's uh, reasoning also require Yeshiva to recognize, I don't know, Jews for Jesus or something like that? How, how much liberty would they get, would the state get to uh, kind of micromanage Yeshiva? That's at the core of the dispute here, because Yeshiva University, if it is not going to be considered religious, either for purposes of the First Amendment or New York law, then the fact that it has sex segregated housing, the fact that its rabbinical seminary is integrated with its male with its men's campus, the fact that elevators get rewired on Shabbat to prevent electronic use, the fact that you have one of the only kosher Dunkin' Donuts in all of New York City right on the Washington Heights campus, all of that is going to be subjected to judicial scrutiny. It's curriculum. It has different curriculum based upon um, male and female be pursuant to the Torah. Uh, there's up to five hours of Torah study every single day on campus. All of these things could be subjected to crippling litigation, and not just for yeshiva, but any religious university that takes the position that its faith and its work are not broken apart, but an integrated whole. Any religious university, any religious organization that has that view would be subjected to crippling lawsuits and could be chilled on exercising the very liberty that the First Amendment exists to protect. Now, Will, we've seen some really good developments in First Amendment religious freedom law lately. We saw the Supreme Court in Carson v. Macon say you can't discriminate against religious organizations uh, in school choice programs. We just saw last weekend the Fifth Circuit 
sorry, last week, uh, say you can't force uh, religious uh, doctors to perform, for example, transgender surgeries in violation of their faith. We've seen a school in Florida recently win the right to continue to implement its school lunch program when the Biden administration had threatened to shut that down. This feels like an outlier. Why is it that you'd see so many uh, favorable decisions defending uh, religious freedom, and then you get this kind of case that, that seems to be really inconsistent and seems to support the idea that the the government can lock down these religious organizations. You're absolutely right that the Supreme Court has been crystal clear again and again that the free exercise of religion lies at the heart of a pluralistic society and wide majorities across the court, 9-0 decisions, 7-2 decisions, generating broad consensus, many that my firm at the Beckett Fund have had, had the privilege of either bringing to the court or being a part of, and they have made these guarantees clear. And maybe this time it has to be written in crayon, but we're confident that it's going to be made clear again. And to that point, then, uh, what do you expect to happen? I expect that the First Amendment that the American people count on to defend and support our traditions of accommodation and respect for pluralism will win the day yet again. Now, this was a trial court decision in New York. You've appealed to the Supreme Court, or what's the process here? Where, where does the appeal go next? Right. So right now, we have a two appeals going on. We've got an emergency petition that has been filed with the US Supreme Court right now because the semester has started at Yeshiva University and Yeshiva University has got an order from the trial court telling it to immediately violate its Torah values. That can't be done. In, and, and so then that's one aspect of it. And then there's the underlying appeal of the overall decision, which is still making its way through the New York appellate courts. And that will continue to proceed apace. Um, but right now, we're hoping and confident that the Supreme Court of the United States will do what it has consistently done and stand up for religious liberty for all faiths. And, and we we pray and hope along with you, Wilhan Beckett Fund, thanks so much for your defense of our religious freedom and for stopping by today. It's my pleasure. Thank you.